guys. It's uh, Dr. Buffkin here and my best friend, Dr. Staples. What's up? So, we've done a few videos together. Uh, we've been live a few times. We've made cool stuff. This is actually, this is the cider that we've been making. But, you know, obviously there's some things that you might want to know a little bit about us. And, um, like I said, this is one of my best friends and he's in Columbus. He's probably one of the reasons I really came to Ohio. Um, you know, we went to Coastal Carolina University together. We did. We did. And home of the Shawna Clears, which Champ champions in the baseball diamond. That's right. You know, just and, saying. Exactly. Not a big deal. Exactly. We don't make a big deal either. We don't tell everyone. No, we don't. So my thought is, uh, Staples, tell tell us a little bit about your background, um, because at things you didn't always start out going to medical school in the beginning. <laughs> no, I, I probably the furthest person to ever. I reached medical school uh, you know, with a few examples. I started out a very humble uh, tobacco farmer in rural South Carolina. Um, graduated high school, moved right in, took off for the Navy, spent four years in the Navy. I got lucky enough to join uh, the Navy probably, was it three months before September 11th? And then I spent the rest of my time like, fighting the war on terrorism in my own small little way, and uh, mostly in San Diego. Um, which, coincidentally, is where a couple of the guys uh, trained to fly the plane. Wow. So it's not like San Diego was out of, you know, out of left field. Anyway, so did that for four years, was a master at arms, same thing as the military police, because um, that was originally the goal, go do Navy police, and then i get out and go to law enforcement uh, in the civilian sector. Uh, decided I didn't like policing all that much. Got out, worked with my cousin, who got a PhD in agronomy, uh, and my brother got me the job. What? What is yeah. that? Well, yeah, so he, he went to Clemson and he got a, a, a master's degree, a, a bachelor's and a master's degree in agriculture. And then he went down to Auburn and got his PhD in agronomy, which is essentially it's farming. Um, so he's kind of a big deal. He's the first Dr. Staples in there. Uh, I'm, the, I'm only the second. Oh, wow. So very humble about his military experience. <laughs> right. And I'm just thankful this guy. He's one of the guys that protected us. I was not in the military. Um, but very thankful for the people that were and who fought for our country. Um, so, you know, I met you at Coastal Carolina University, brother. Yeah, yeah. About two years after uh, military service, my wife said, Hey, dummy, you're kind of smart. Maybe you should use your GI Bill to go to college. And I'm glad I did because that landed me in my kitchen talking to you. I don't know, was it been eight years later? Wow, Isn't that like amazing? That? But yeah, your wife, I mean, you're a smart guy, and you're, you know, a physician, obviously, you're, you're sure. super smart, but sure. I tend to think that you're right, your wife, Haley, plug for you, a little bit yeah. smarter, just a little bit. Well, she saw potential, and that's, that's for sure, and she's really good at that. She sees the best in everybody, so uh, I'm lucky to have her, honestly. Got you. So, you know, she tells you to go to Coastal, and then, and then, do you even remember the day that we met, or was I just looking at you from afar and looking at chemistry class? <laughs> well, I, I think, I want you to tell a story, but I bet you remember the first day in organic chemistry class. Like, we, we're back at Coastal, and I meet you, and we're in class for the very first time together. I'm kind of like on the left side of the room, and you're on the right side of the room. Is that right? I always sit on the right side. <laughs> There's a political plug in there too. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm on the left side, he's on the right, and this guy raises his hand. And, and, and what'd you ask? Well, El Elgin said, Has anybody taken organic chemistry before? And I was like, Heck yeah, heck yeah, this guy right here, I took both classes, I should be good. He's like, well, you can try to test out of it if you want to. And that was, that was really dumb. I shouldn't have said anything. There's a big difference between a 200-level <laughs> organic chemistry class and a 300-level. Right. I mean, you, he, took that at, he took it at test school. He thought he was out in the woods. Right. And I remember this guy. I was like, oh, he's so cocky. Yeah. I don't like this guy. But then I realized I took a look back in the mirror like three weeks later. And I was like, maybe he's a lot like me. Totally not cocky. <laughs> just trying to get out of taking that class again. Can't wait, but you are cocky. Admit to it. No, I'm, I, he won't admit to it. But he totally is. He's no, a cocky guy. No, no, no. Got the most confident than anybody. It's, it's not cocky if you can do it. Fair enough. So let's fast forward a little bit. This is me, young Padawan, coming through there. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm just feeling my way through, just doing my thing in college, just enjoying college, just like everybody. Having a good time. Having a good time. Sure. 
And organic chemistry is not going my way. It's not going my way at all. Well, I, I don't think it went anybody's way that I know of, uh, but I tell you, uh, between me and you and this other guy, Mark Grubb. Mark Grubb! Mark Grubb. Um, we banded together. Uh, we like rats on a sinking ship, <laughs> and somehow we uh, we studied together and we passed that thing. Yeah, we did. We passed it. I remember going to uh, to two tutorial sessions with you guys. We'd get on the marker board and just mm -hmm. start drawing all these crazy organic molecules with whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. However, what does matter is there was a special type of lunch that we would have on these days. Do you remember that lunch? Little, uh, little, little, little pizza? Yeah, pizza, little, little pizza, pizza and it came from where? Papa John's. Oh, and it always, always had to be Papa size. Oh. And uh, so anyway. We so always like to eat. You know? Yeah, we did. Yeah. So there's college. Alright guys, today is the day. This is primary fermentation to secondary fermentation day. I got my boy, Dr. Bob Cully here in the hizzle because, uh, well, Austin's gone. He's gone so He's far gone. away. He's gone. It's so sad. What happened? Well, residency, residency. happened. Yeah. And, uh, but anyway, so before we begin, I just kind of want to introduce you to Bob. He's like my more senior, senior resident in the EM program. And um, I think it's another time for a medical moment, Bob. What you got for me? So, medical moment of the day. Uh, the ancient Egyptians actually used beer to uh, cure infections. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Really? Really. Wow. I know. I can't, can't beat that. No, 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 no. Is that why I've been healthy for the last year? <laughs> that explains it. Great. So, uh, they actually found that uh, certain types of uh, antibiotics called tetracyclines actually grow under certain light. Whoa. Glow. They actually glow? They actually glow bone, skin, tissue. So what they found was that they would find these tetracyclines in uh, in the ancient mummies and uh, remains of the ancient Egyptians, and they uh, did some research and they found that when people were sick, they would give them beer. Beer. It would, it would cure them. Wow. So beer cures all. Well, Bob, thanks for that medical moment, Doctor Coley. I appreciate you coming in today <laughs> to kind of help out this process. Since my boy Brown is not here, but that's fine. We're going to get things done. For you, Brown, there's a plug for you. I miss you bunches. We all miss you. All right. So basically, we're going to take this priming. I've already sanitized everything, guys. Everything is clean. Bacteria-free. Bacteria-free. Just going to take this lid off. Oh, that smell. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a fresh-squished IPA smell. Wow. 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 Smells so good. So we're just going to take, once again, we're just doing a transference. Get the siphon working. Again, guys, this has been sanitized. Got to work on that pump action. Get that bicep flowing. Get the blood right where it needs to be, guys. Alright, guys, so... We've now completed the process. We've transferred our primary fermentation product into the carboy for a second. And Dr. Cole is going to help me out real quick. Of course, I can't go through this venture without taking a sample of my own brew. Give it to me, Bob. Mm. Oh, that's so good. You can just smell the pineapples. What other aroma are you getting from this, Bob? A little mango, a little guava. Northern Brewing, this is a plug for you. The Fresh Squish IPA is perfect, just to start off with. We haven't even done the whole secondary process yet. We haven't even dry hopped this brew yet, and it's already tasted fantastic. I said, please forgive me. I'm in a southern state of mind. And those girls out in California, they don't understand. 